talk about how most mental BS is worries about the past, worries about the future, and petty judgments of this and that. But another big reason we end up with so much mental BS is that we attach meaning to everything. When something happens that we don't like or can't explain, we tell ourselves stories that make sense of it. And those stories will fit with our personal narrative. What do I mean? Well, I grew up with a few crooks, and I was a crook for a little while. But while I always paid back my debts, most crooks don't run up to you and say, oh, I'm so sorry, hey, uh, here's that money I owe you. So when it comes to money and people owing me money, I tend to spin a story that fits the personal narrative from my past. My narrative almost kicked in big time just recently. I have a condo in Brooklyn that I rent out to a tenant. Nice guy, works on Wall Street, been there a while, no issues, wires me the money right into my bank account uh, on time every month. But I noticed a few days ago that for two months his rent money wasn't showing up in my bank account. So I could have immediately started to attach meaning to this situation that fits with my personal narrative. Ah, oh, I see. This jabroni decided to pick up and leave in the middle of his lease, hoping I wouldn't notice for a few months that the rent money ain't getting wired into my bank account, which gives him time to sell off my furniture, pack up, and go to Guatemala and buy a fishing boat. Mm-hmm. Now, you see how I might have attached a negative narrative-based meaning to help explain the situation. How productive, though, do you think following that train of thought would be? Now, that's kind of an extreme example, uh, and it's a little exaggerated, but every single day, things happen to us that trigger our narrative to give meaning. My neighbor didn't wave to me this morning, didn't even look at me, he must be pissed because I didn't invite him to Jimmy's birthday party. He forgot our anniversary, so he doesn't love me anymore. They didn't come to our daughter's wedding, so they're not really our friends, I guess. We weren't invited to their daughter's wedding because we must have done something to offend them. They haven't called me back yet, so they must not like me. She must not like me because she responded so slowly to my email. My assistant shows up late a lot because he doesn't respect me. Oh, and he must be looking for another job because he's had two doctor's appointments this week. It is exhausting. You exhaust yourself with the story and the stress it creates. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the story is pure fantasy. Then there's the time you've wasted and the delay of the solution. The other thing that the storytelling does is rob you of power. Your story, I guarantee you, is not one of you having power. And as such, the longer the storytelling goes on, the longer you have no power over the situation. By the way, the case of the tenant who ran off to Guatemala with my money. He did wire the money both months, but there was a typo in the account number and his bank never informed him that the transfers didn't go through. As soon as he found out, he apologized and he immediately wired me all the money. Now for some deeper insight into the mindless mess that is meaning making and the brain hack that mitigates it, we have a special guest all the way in from New Jersey. The Jersey Buddha. I call him JB. Welcome, JB. Yeah, sure. Uh, so what's the question? Well, we're talking today about mental BS, right? And attaching meaning. And how this is very costly in terms of your time and your mental energy and all that, not to mention how disempowering it is. Um, and, you know, we want to know what your thoughts are on it. Uh, yeah, in, in Jersey, we like to attach meaning. In fact, while most people may know New Jersey as the Garden State, until 1966, the license plates there actually read the Attached Meaning State. Wow, I, I didn't know that. I mean, uh, 66 was the year that my family moved from Philly to Jersey, so I thought it was always the Garden State. So how did uh, New Jersey come to be known as the Attached Meaning State? Uh, sure. Uh, take the expression, what are you looking at? Because if somebody's looking at me, it must mean there's a problem between us. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking at me. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with that one. Uh, but as a Jersey Buddha, you must have long ago resolved this issue within yourself. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be known as the Jersey Buddha. So how do you deal with the natural inclination to attach meaningless meaning to things? 
Okay, sure. We are meaning-making machines. We are constantly assigning meaning to things. And 99% of the time, the meaning we assign to things is negative and totally BS. To stop this, you got to cause the pause. Cause the pause? Yeah, cause the pause. Stop your train of thought, get present to the BS, and get real so you don't assign meaning. Let's say, for instance, somebody's been renting your condo in Brooklyn and you discover that no rent has been paid for two friggin' months. You must listen for the negative because the negative is both the trigger for assigning negative meaning as well as your cue to cause the pause. Now, what do I mean by a negative? It could be a negative feeling about somebody, a suspicion of negative behavior or intent, or it could be a negative feeling about yourself. In the case of this non-payment thing, it would be the former, a suspicion of negative behavior or intent. Specifically, you might begin to assign the meaning that this jabroni decided to pick up and leave in the middle of his lease, hoping you wouldn't notice for a few months that the rent money ain't getting wired into your bank account, which gives him time to sell all your furniture, pack up, and go to Guatemala to buy a fishing boat. Wow, that's uh, amazing that you used that example, JB, because I just had the same exact experience actually happen to me the other day. And that's exactly the meaning that I was, you know, pretty close to assigning to it. Wow, no shit. Huh. Yeah, huh. All right. Well, now, what happens when we don't listen for the negative and don't cause the pause? If you don't cause that pause, you keep piling on more meaning and you delay the solution to the problem because the story you create gives you not only an explanation of why this is happening, but it gives you an identity as the party that has been wronged confirming all your negative personal narrative stories about your suspicions and insecurities. And wrong parties have no personal power. No power. No power, no solution. How the hell did I just clap my hands? All right, well, I think I totally get the concept, JB. So to recap, you know, the moment you hear the negative, cause the pause and anticipate your BS stories and choose instead to seek to gather objective data and find a solution. What did I just say for the last five minutes? Yeah, uh, it's uh, called a recap. So listen, I wanna thank you for coming on the show and uh, sharing this, this fabulous uh, hack. And uh, we'd like to have you back sometime. Would you come back on the show again, uh, come to the studio again? Yeah, let's do that. I, uh, I like San Diego. You can look at people and they don't assign no meaning. Huh, unbelievable. All right, great. Well, we'll be talking soon. Take it easy.